a requirement to the athlete. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so yeah, this is just the double leg. So this would just be a nice intro, like at a short distance and just working on getting low, those short, um, quick, busy feet um, is a really good kind of intro to being able to, you know, decelerate and change direction as well. So that's the double leg um, finish. And then you would extend the start point out and get um, them to sprint in at a higher speed. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and then just progressing into a single leg um, stop. Yep. Oh, so you're ending up think. in like a, a lunging position there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as if you were going to almost like back back pedal um, yep. is the other variation there. Yep. Um, so then moving on to change of direction and agility. Um, so uh, if I go to here, you can do lots of different. This is kind of the general cone setup for most warm-ups as well so yeah. in terms of scheduling this stuff in like the high speed um, the d cell and this change of direction and agility work it's good to kind of do it at the start of the yeah. session yeah. Um, so you're getting that kind of high quality they're a bit fresher um, and then if you're going to have to add in any distance top up you kind of do that at the yes. the end yeah. um, so here you can do so s bends is um, actually just running through the cones like you know yep it's like a snake. Snake, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then you could do 45 degree cuts, so going from like yellow to yellow to yellow or blue to blue to blue. Yep. Um, and then I think I've got some videos of some 90 degree cuts here. Yep. Um, so here Sarah is running forward. So similar to before, she was running forward and deselling, and then you're just adding in a little lateral cut and slide. So that's a nice little progression just from doing the intro to the decel. Yeah. Um, so just watching it again, getting low, quick, busy feet. And this can be something that's done quite early. Yeah, um, again, it's just because they're like kind of moving in a confined space and not kind of running um, forward too fastly. You can kind of do this even before six months. Yep. So this one is just more 135 degree cut. So yeah. running forward and back pedaling back. So this is like quite a common movement pattern in footy as well. So it's like you're yeah. um, defending, you're coming up, defending a lead, and then you're kind of drop stepping, still keeping your eyes up at the ball. Yeah. Um, and then you might be coming back into a contest. So um, trying to design the movements, I think, for the sport. Um, so these are just, I guess, principles of, you know, ticking off different degrees of cuts. Yeah. And um, But you might, you know, it might be a different thing for basketball. It's like a sprint out and more of that lateral sliding yes. movement. Yep. Um, whereas for footy, this might be one where, yeah, they're having to... Yeah, well, you think about footy, um, you think about rugby league, you think about soccer, there's often, um, especially soccer and footy in particular, where there's gonna be flying balls yeah. go over your head on a consistent basis, and you wanna be back pedaling to you know, potentially jump up and take a mark, or jump up and do a header, yeah. or get yourself in a position where you're now sort of in between, you know, your attacker or defender. Um, that drill there is a ripper, it's, it's really good, and like you said, it can be done a bit earlier, yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously working, you could do it in a walking way to begin yeah. with, to build up confidence, and then you can really sort of start to sharpen it up and become a lot faster and really improve that quality of movement. But yeah, these drills here are really, really good. Yeah, and just working in like where they're trying to look as well, because I think sometimes when you do these drills, there's cones and they just really focus on internally what's happening. So yeah. trying to add in, like you might even have someone at the front kind of, you know, with fingers up and they have to call out the number on the finger. So you're actually making sure that they're thinking about also what's happening around them yep. as well. Yeah, and I think some of the some of the big, big fears, I think, as clinicians as to, you know, so they, they may see a drill like this and think, oh, I don't know if, I, if they're safe to do that yet, but I think the person will, yeah. th if, they're, if they've got enough strength, if they've got enough power, they'll just do it. Yeah. Like, you know, and because they're not pivoting, twisting, yeah. cutting, getting bumped. So look, the risk of re-injury here is actually quite low. Yeah. And if they're not strong or they're not confident, they won't attack the they won't attack the exercise yeah. very well and it'll clearly show in, in their output. And then if they're not if if they're not moving well, then it's then it's the, the conversations you have with them to say, okay, is it yeah. is it your strength, is it your power, is it your confidence? And then you're obviously going back and retesting and saying, you know, let's have a look at your quad again, let's have a look at your hamstring again, let's look at your calf power, let's yeah. let's look at a few things and see have we got a deficit still that's 
still hanging on or is it purely mental is it purely yeah. psychological or fear of re-injury or are we lacking confidence in and, and then we can sort of facilitate a, yeah. a, an improved outcome that way so yeah. yeah i think this kind of stuff here can be done in a, in a really safe way and we all can sleep well at night introducing this stuff in <laughs> yeah um, and with that back cutting one as well, you could add in like a, a ball. Um, that's a common one that as soon as a ball goes up in the air and they can't kind of look at where their feet are, yeah. then you can see some of those just subconscious kind of, I guess, they're a little bit nervous about doing it. But usually if they've got the strength, as you say, after a few reps, they're, mm. they're attacking yeah. it um, really, really that's, well. That's right. uh, this is a reactive change of direction. So same um, cone set up. I'm standing at the end here. Um, and calling a number. So the numbers are one, two, three, four up the right hand side, five, six, seven, eight yep. down the, the other side. Yeah, so awesome. that you tell them that they just run towards you again. You can control the speed um, with this and then they just have to react and go, go to that cone. So the first one she couldn't figure out what number she was meant to go to and then the next one she yeah, yeah she got it, got it, it quite well yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you could use different colors hats or different objects yeah. or anything like that and color all those kind of things yeah. yeah yeah so these things obviously with a partner um this one's just an agility grid which i'll touch on it's actually an assessment that you can do as well but you set up a 15 by 15 meter or a smaller one for mm. basketball or a like smaller field-based sport and you just start the attacker and the defender in different positions. So here, um, Sarah closest to us is the defender and Amy, the other girl, is the attacker and she's trying to get through yep. the gates closest to us. Say go. And it's just to, to touch, so it's a tag yes. game. Yeah. Or you could change, then add that to be a tackle yeah. in instead. So, awesome. Um,